Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. This is the video manual for my recent Kickstarter campaign, the Bluetooth controlled speech recognition module and the Bluetooth controlled relay module. And this is uh, featuring the HC-06 uh, Bluetooth receiver. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to connect this to your phone, then we'll discuss how to use the speech recognition module and then how to use the Bluetooth um, relay board. This is the slot for the Bluetooth receiver right here. It's a four pin female header. Uh, you'll see the, p the pins are labeled BT BRX for Bluetooth receiver, BTX for Bluetooth trans uh, um, transmitter, GND for ground and five volts. Now on the back side of the HC06, you'll see RX, TX, ground and VCC. So you wanna match that up. So as you can see from this perspective, they're opposite. So if I place it this way into the slot, should fit right in, we are properly connected to it. Now we're going to talk about how to sync your HC06 to your Android phone. As soon as you power up your board, the HC06 should blink. And that's when it's blinking, it's saying it's not connected to anything. So now what we have to do is we have to open up our phone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my settings, go to Bluetooth, uh, Turn on Bluetooth to see list of available devices. Yes. Scan. Because I've already con I've already connected to three different other HC06 receivers, so I'm going to scan for one that isn't already paired. And I've only got one activated right now, off screen. So this is not what we're looking for. Just have to give it a second. It's scanning. It'll, it'll, it will eventually find the other HC06 device. There we go, HC06. So this is the fourth one. Uh, the password to your HC06 is defaulted to one, two, three, four. Done. Okay. And now our HC06 is paired. So now we can use our uh, Bluetooth modules. We just need to know how to use the apps. So you might not be able to see what's on the screen right now. It says awaiting command. It's because of the light. I apologize for that. What I want to do is open my AMR voice app. It's a great free app on the App Store. Android meets robots. And what this does is it communicates with the HC06. So what you want to do is go to the settings, connect robot, and you'll want to do scan for devices. I've already done it and it recognizes my HC06, which is already paired with my phone. So I'm going to, I'm going to connect to this HC06. It's going to take a second and the LED stops flashing, we are connected to it, and we are now ready to go. Once connected, I just have to press this button. Hello. It's, you, said, you said hello. And it also said it on the LCD screen, and I'll show you that right now. Hello. My name is Pat. It's very accurate. Um, and so that's all you need to know about the functionality getting started. Now let's talk about the outputs. On the output rail, there's are two, there are two grounds, a VCC, which is a regulated 5-volt line, uh, and several voice recognition pins. Four for forward, back for backward, up, down, left, right, on, off, stop, and code. Code is the only one that's a little bit different. Code... Um, Code responds when you say the word four or the words four 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 four. It only activates if you say four 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 four. Now, as for down here, what you'll see, what you'll notice, is a three-pin header, and we're going to use an included two-pin jumper to select between momentary loop mode and latching mode. So mon and lat. And so I'm going to choose latching mode. For now, we'll get to momentary mode later. Uh, latching mode means that every time we say a certain command, the output will toggle on five volts. If we say it again, it toggles off. In, in uh, momentary mode, if we say a command, that output will go on for about 500 milliseconds and then turn off. So let's do a demonstration. So what I've got here is I've got the code output connected through a current limiting resistor to the anode or positive of the LED, an LED, and I've got the negative of the LED, the cathode, connected using a wire to ground. And so, um, 
So basically, we'll be able to see the logic on the code output when I say 4444. And I'm in latching mode. So let's try it. 4444. Four, four. And because we're in latching mode, the output latches high. Let's try it again. 4444. Four, four, four. And the LED turns off. Now, one thing I will mention is that you cannot change the logic. Uh, you can't, or sorry, you cannot switch between momentary and latching mode on the fly. You need to power down and power back up in either mode. So if I want to enter into momentary mode, what I have to do is remove power, take the jumper, the two pin, uh, the two pin uh, jumper, and switch to lat. Now what I'll do is I'll power back up again. The LED on the on the receiver will blink. I will connect my robot, connect it to HD06, give it a second, and we're connected. Now watch the code output LED. 4444. Four, four, four. So for about 500 milliseconds, that LED turns on, then turns off. 4444. Four, four, four. And of course, the, L the LCD says, says you said 4444. Four, four, four. So what if, I, what if I try the other outputs? Now I'm connected to the down output. I'm going to say something other than down. Up. Nothing happened because I'm not connected to the up output. The, outpu the up output would have pulsed on and off, but we're not connected to it right now. So what if I say down? Down. Pulses on, pulses off. So latching mode, momentary mode, uh, it's pretty straightforward to see this module is very easy to use and you've got 10 different voice commands. Again, I'll repeat them. That's 4444, four, four, four. stop, off, on, left, right, down, up, backward, and forward. And you can easily connect to your Arduino uh, or PIC project or even your TTL based project if you have some chips lying around. It's very easy to use. Um, there's really not a whole lot to it. The Bluetooth Relay module has a little bit more to it. However, uh, as long as you download the user interface that I've uh, I've offered you through a Robo Remo, you shouldn't have any problems. So let's talk about the Bluetooth Relay module. This is the Bluetooth Relay board with optional solenoid lock. It's pretty neat. Uh, one thing you're going to want to know, note is that if you're using the solenoid lock, you want to use a 12 volt, one amp. Uh, power adapter. Uh, if you're just going to be using the relays, you want to use a 9 volt 1 amp. Just because when you use the higher voltage, the regulator gets a little bit warm. Uh, so in any case, let's have a look at the main board. All of the relays have three outputs. Um, NC, normally closed. CO, common. And NO, normally open. When the relay is off, the common pin, the middle pin, connects internally to the NC pin, the normally closed pin. When the relay is activated, the common pin disconnects from the normally closed pin and connects internally to the normally open pin, the NO pin. So it's when, when, uh, when the relay is off, these two pins are connected. When the relay is on, disconnect, connected. Very easy to use, just like an on-off switch, the traces are very thick. Uh, now let's have a look at some of our options on the bottom of the board. Each relay has an LED indicator showing you which LED is on. You can't see this one because the regulator is in the way. Um, but when I do a demonstration, I'll move, I'll move the device around so you can see it. There are some options on here that are not being used. Um, the lock and the mode LED. Those are used because I want to use this for a completely different project down the road. We also do not use uh, this four pin header. We don't use the PRG header. We use the set header as a mode selection between uh, latching and momentary mode and we use this little B Bluetooth connector. So let's have a look at the Bluetooth connector. This is how you want to place your HC06 into the connector. You want to make it so that the front of the board is facing the relays. Don't, turn, don't plug this in backwards or else you're going to be in trouble. Very, very serious. You do not want to plug that in backwards. You could, fly, you could easily fry your HC06. So we'll see the LED from this perspective. We'll plug in right here. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, I've provided to anyone who purchased this set the instructions on how to install my uh, pre-made UI into the uh, Robo Remo app. So I'm presuming that if you are watching this that you have installed that 
user interface. It's a very simple user interface and allows for us to plug and play with our module. As long as we have our HC06 connected and synced to our device, we open Robo Remo and we're ready. We're ready to start. So let's plug it in and talk about the Robo Remo app. So what I'm going to do is plug it in. I'm using a 9 volt 1 amp adapter and uh, I'm going to open the Robo Remo free app. I suggest you buy the Robo Remo app because you can do so much more with it. Uh, visit the Robo Remo website for some code examples for your Arduino. Uh, Robo Remo, open it up. Now my interface comes up immediately. I've got Relay 1, Relay 2, Relay 3, Relay 4, and Clear. Um, and so, uh, obviously you have to upload my app, import my app. The instructions will be given to those who purchase the kit or the people who, who pledge towards the Kickstarter. I'll go to Menu and I'll go to Connect. Bluetooth. Turn Bluetooth on, yes. HC06. Port 1. And we're connected. So, what happens if I press Relay 1? Relay 3, Relay 4. So I've got this upside down. Relay 1 is over here. Relay 1. And it'll stay on for as long as I hold it. Relay 2. Relay 3. 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. Clear does nothing in this mode because right now I'm in I'm in momentary or sorry, uh, yeah, in momentary mode. And we use the set jumper right here to determine which mode we're in. Now we can change this on the fly. From this perspective, we've got the middle and right pins uh, connected, and that is selecting A. On the other side of the board, you can see A slash B. So what if I take that jumper off and I switch to the middle and left pins? This I can do on the fly. Now we'll be in latching mode. Relay 1. Relay 2. Relay 1. Relay 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. Clear. 1, 3. Clear. 1, 4, 3, 2. Clear. It's that easy. Very, 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 very easy to use. However, we haven't talked about the optional solenoid lock yet, so let's do that now. One thing you'll notice right off the bat if you look near the regulator is there is a two-pin jumper labeled EN. And what we want to do is we want to take our two-pin jumper right here and short them, connect them together. And that enables our Bluetooth lock. Now, if you're using Relay 1, for any other reason, never have that jumper on there. But I'm going to take the solenoid lock and I'm going to connect it to the right jumper labeled lock. And it doesn't matter, it's just a coil of wire. Solenoid is just an electromagnet. So you can plug it in either way. So now, let's see what we can do with it. What you want to be using, if you're using this solenoid, uh, this lock, you want to be using a 12 volt 1 amp adapter, uh, not a 9 volt 1 amp. I'm mean, still going to use the 9, amp, 9 volt 1 amp adapter for this demonstration to show that you can still do it, uh, but you'll have better results if you use a 12 volt 1 amp adapter. But if you're just using the relays, using the uh, using the 9 volt 1 amp adapter is suggested. In any case, relay 1. Relay 1. Relay 1. Clear. Relay 1. So let's get a better uh, a better look at this at this solenoid up close. The solenoid has a mounting bracket and relay one. I can press relay one again, or I can press clear. Relay one, clear. So it's just a fun little extra. If you're not using that, make sure to remove the EN jumper and remove the uh, electromagnetic solenoid as well, and just use the relay. Now let's talk about how to connect stuff to our relays. As an example of how relays work, they're just an these relays are just on-off switches. So, as we talked about earlier, the normally connected, or normally closed rather, NC pin is connected to common, CO, when the relay is off. And the common pin is connected to the NO, normally open pin, when the relay turns on. So what I've got here is 5 volts connected to my common pin. And I've got my normally, uh, my normally open pin connected to a 470 ohm resistor in series with an LED. The negative side of the LED is connected to ground on my power supply. So when the relay turns on, the common pin connects to the normally open pin and power will flow through through the LED or through the resistor, power the LED and to the ground of my power supply. So let's show a demonstration of that. Okay, relay 1. Nothing happens because we're using relay 4. Relay 2, nothing happens. Relay 4. 
power flows through my power supply through the relay, powers the LED back to my power supply ground. So it's just it's just an isolated high power on off switch. Now when you want this is a, a very this is an obviously not a, an ideal application. You wouldn't use a relay to power an LED like this. Uh, but just this just shows you the mechanics of the relay. What happens if I make if I switch my connections? What if I connect the uh, my current normally open connection to the normally closed connection. As you can see right now, none of the relays are on, but my LEDs lit up because power is flowing through the common pin, through the normally closed pin, the NC pin, through the LED and back to my ground. By default, when the relay is off, those two pins are connected. But as I mentioned earlier, as soon as you activate the relay, the common pin disconnects from the normally closed pin, the NC pin, and connects to the normally open pin. So if you have a device that you want to be powered by default uh, and to be turned off when the relay is on, this is how you would wire it. Now, let's talk about AC devices. AC devices can be very, very dangerous. You have to know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, don't try it. If you are going, if you do know what you're doing, then let's just talk about a, a bit of a recap here. Uh, Electrical, electrical code says that you have to switch on the hotline. So if you were to use one of the relays as a switch for a lamp or something, what I would do is I would cut the hotline, strip back just a tiny bit of insulation, connect one end to CO and the other to NO. Or if you wanted to be, to be powered by default, I'd connect one of the severed ends to common and the other to the normally closed pin. And then you could use the relay to control power to a turn, like a reapply, because once you cut that wire, there's no power going to your AC device. As soon as you turn the relay on, assuming you're connected, you've connected the two severed ends to NO and CO. As soon as you turn that relay on, it reconnects it, just like a, just like a light switch. So it's that simple. Now, if you have any more questions or if you want to know more about that, I do have some tutorials and some full-on examples. I didn't think it necessary for this specific video because a relay is really just a high-powered on-off switch. So that's the video. If you have any questions, email me. Check us out at engineeringshock.com or paintballprops.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great afternoon.